So these gates that have been unleashed against the church, there is a statement that Jesus Christ has released. He said, And say unto you, Peter, on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail. Shall. Wonderful name of our Lord and Savior. Amen. It's another Thursday, and we are about to eat what God is about to dish for us today. Hallelujah. You know that God loves us so much. You know that God loves us so much. He has a purpose for our lives. Hallelujah. You know, today we are, our sermon for today is uh, the church Jesus Christ built. Amen. We, we need to know the church Jesus Christ built. Are we the church that Jesus Christ built? On Sunday, we are dealing with the church and the cross. First days is about Jesus Christ, the church Jesus Christ built. So we need to understand that. We need to know what the church Jesus Christ built and what is the best, the best place to start. I believe is the, the place where Jesus Christ first mentioned the word church, which is in Matthew 16. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. Thank you, mighty God. This evening, we thank you, Father, that it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, mighty God. Irrespective of the situation, irrespective of the circumstances, Lord Jesus Christ is still all about you. And the finished works of Calvary. Speak to us, we are listening. Speak to us, mighty God, we are listening. Release, Father, the mysteries, mighty God, of the kingdom of God. Release, mighty God, these mysteries, Father. We need to know Christ, mighty God, Jesus Christ, and Him crucified. Heavenly Father, Mutsimonga, we thank you that you are releasing your word. And I thank you, mighty God, that your word is imparting. They hear us and their lives will never be the same. Those who have lost confidence, mighty God, let their confidence be restored. Those who have lost hope, let their hope be restored. Those who are fearful, mighty God, let boldness be restored. Those who are discouraged, let encouragement be restored. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, for you are the God who changes not. You are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. You promise that your word shall never come back to you void. Your word shall always accomplish that which you to accomplish and prosper in the thing that you send it to. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, the reading for the word tonight is upon uh, Matthew 16. Verse 16, we have touched a lot about the scripture, but to give it context, uh, context, we'll start, it, um, we'll start it at Matthew 16, verse 13. So said, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea, Philip, he asked his disciples, saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, what do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, but my father who is in heaven, 18, and I also say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Today I want us to focus on two things, build, rock, church, three things. Jesus Christ said, on this rock I will build my church. I say unto thee, you are Peter, on this rock I will build my church. It's important 
to first understand why did God choose the rock to build this church on? And what is this rock? Once we understand what is the purpose of the rock, we will never be fearful of the current circumstances and situations. Because we will know that we are built upon the rock. We will never be fearful, nor be concerned, nor be discouraged. Yes, I might be honest with you. I will be honest with you. Sometimes it hurts that we cannot meet as a church. Uh, as for me, sometimes it really rubs me off the wrong way, a big time, because I believe that we are created to, to for fellowship. It is, it is commanded in the scripture that we should, we, should, we should fellowship. And if you can read also, look for, it's written that Jesus Christ is his custom. He went to the synagogue on Sabbath, meaning that Jesus Christ had, had a habit or a custom or a habit or a lifestyle of going to church. So church is important. I'm not discounting that. However, we must know what is this church. Because without knowing this church, we, we, we will depend on what the world can take away and give instead of depending on what we have on the inside. Amen. We'll depend on what the world can take away or give. And we are not at the mercy of the world. I, I want that, that's one message that I want the church to understand tonight. We are not at the mercy of the world. No. We are not at the mercy of any person, no. Jesus Christ said he will build his church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail. And he said, upon the rock I will build my church. I think the first thing that we need to understand, why, why did Jesus Christ mention the word gates? You know, in, in ancient cities, all the cities were surrounded by walls. You need to understand this. And, and in the gates, gates were spiritual places, where pre, spiritual places where the courts, the transacting of businesses, deliberating of matters took place. When Jesus Christ said, the gates of hell shall not please prevail against it, he was not referring up necessarily about the gates, he was saying that the, the deliberations that are taken in high places of governance. The deliberations that are taken in business trans where people are transacting against the church. The decisions that have been taken there, they shall not prevail against the church. When he spoke about the gates of, he said, the gates of haters, he said, the gate is a place where men used to meet, sit, deliberate, pass judgment. If, 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 if you check Proverbs 31, it speaks about a woman who talks well of a man that even at the gate, the man is respected. Meaning where, where men congregate and sit, they respect that man because there is a woman, someone is speaking about her, where? At the gate. So the gate it is the place of decision making. And Jesus Christ knew that one day, there will be a parliament that will say, church, let there be no church. There will be a court that will say, church was wrong. There will be a business that will say, as long as you are not in agreement with us on this particular matter, you are not transacting with us. All these things Jesus Christ predicted while he was still alive. What are the gates of hell? You see, this is where public matters are heard. Let us go to Job 29. Job 29 verse 7 says, Sometimes I went to the gate of the city. There I sat down with the people who ruled the city. Job 29 verse 7 says, Sometimes I went to the city where I sat down to the people what? Who ruled the city? So Jesus Christ said, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Meaning that what is Hades? Hades is the, is the it was the most feared plague of death. He say, even those gates that are ruled by Satan, 
death is, is referring to even those gates that are ruled by the spirit of law of sin and death shall not prevail against the church. So do not be surprised when all these things are happening. They are not happening to destroy the church. They are happening to show victory for the church. Hallelujah. If all you all be excited tonight. They are happening so that the church can know that it is a victorious entity. You see, Jesus Christ did not say, even the gates of the city shall not prevail against it. No. He went to the extreme. The gates of Hades. Where? He knows that there will be those satanic men and women who are controlled by the kingdom of darkness. Who will sit by the gates of the city. Because they rule the city. What are the gates of the city? The parliament. All, 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 all the places where the, where, where the scene I'm, I'm making, the, the metros, the, the councils, all the places. But we, we now let us understand the word hate. Is the gate. The, that's what he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. L let us go back a little, a little while. When Jesus Christ was born, Herod sat at the gate and made a decision. That all children under the, two years, under the age of two years should be what? Should be killed. Why? What was he trying to, to, to destroy? The church. And what happened? Everything else was destroyed except the church. Jesus Christ prevailed. He became, he remained what? Victorious. So I want to put it to you, child of God. That do not be moved by circumstances. Do not worry about what's happening about, about. Do not fear. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. But of love and of power and of a sound mind. What is happening, it is, it is what must happen. So that the church can be victorious. If this does not happen, you know, let, you, know you, you, you cannot say, Father... I'm a victim. I'm a victor. There is a race that I must run. There are victories to be won. God give me power. I mean, the moment you say there are victories to be won, you have asked for war. Because there's no way that we can have victories without a war. Hallelujah. So these gates that have been unleashed against the church, there is a statement that Jesus Christ has released. He said, and say unto you, Peter, on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail. Shall is a very strong word. It means that there is no two ways about it. Hallelujah. Let us read Deuteronomy 22. Deuteronomy 22 verse 4. Okay, it's not going there. Deuteronomy 22 verse 4. I want, I, want, uh, I want us to focus on the gate and then we'll go to the rock. Deuteronomy 22, verse 4. He said, You shall not see your brother's donkey or his horse fall down along the road and hide yourself from it. You shall surely help him and lift him up. No, no, no. This, this verse, I don't know how it came here. It's, it's, not, it's not talking to, to, to what, what I wanted to say. But anyway, check here. Let, let us talk about the narrow gate. Matthew 7 verse 13. You should, go through, you should go in through the narrow gate to get through life. The wide gate is easy to go through. The wide path is easy to travel on. Many people find that the wide gate is the way to hell. So now understand this. When the gate look like they are being narrowed, for the church, it is a confirmation of what Jesus Christ has said. The narrow gate take us to life. Hallelujah. You must be excited about this. When the gates look like they're, they're, they're being arrowed, you must, they're being narrowed, you must know that this is what God has planned. So we are not a church under the mercy of the rulers of the city. We are the church 
under the mercy of what Jesus Christ has said. Hallelujah. And he also said, on this rock, I will build my church. You know, if, if we want to understand this, when Jesus Christ met Peter in John 1, 14, John, John 1, 42, and I'm reading is in English, then he brought Simon to Jesus. Jesus looked at Simon and he said, you are Simon, John's son. Your name should be safe as this is the same as Peter, which means the rock. Why? Why did, why did God change Peter's name? Because his first name meant the reed, the unstable one. Hallelujah. So God did not give birth to unstable church. The on and off of us not going to church or going to church does not necessarily mean that we are unstable. We are still upon the rock. Hallelujah. Who is still upon the rock? You, child of God. Your job is still built upon the rock. Your health is still built upon the rock. Your family is still built upon the rock. Satan must try to shake, but just know that you are not the reed. You are not the reed. You must, you should confess where you are, that if Jesus changed Peter's name, Peter's name from, and call him the rock, I am the rock. I am not the reed. I'm not going to be moved. Why? They might have taken away my ability to, to go to church. They might have taken away my ability to, make, to meet with other, with, 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 with other congregants. But let me tell you, they did not take away my closet. I still have a place to go and pray to my God. And that is where the power of the church is. When we pray, that is where the victory comes from. Hallelujah. When Peter was arrested, when they were about to cut off his head, the Bible said that when Herod saw that he cut off John's head and it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to take Peter also. That's what the Bible says. And when, 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 when they, he took, they took Peter, they wanted to, 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 to kill him also. The Bible said, and the church prayed. Where was the church? The, the Bible said, say, and the, the people went to the synagogue to go pray for Peter. The Bible said, and the church prayed. And as the church prayed, the angels were activated. Peter was released from, 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 from jail. You are where you're supposed to be right now. And the main purpose of your current position is for the church to pray. Hallelujah. It's for the rock to be stable. It's for the rock to say, I shall not be moved. Because Jesus is our rock. So the church of God is built upon the foundation of the prophets and apostles. Hallelujah. We shall not be moved. We shall not, just say wherever you are, we shall not be moved. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Why? Why, why did Jesus mention the rock? Why didn't he say upon this mountain? Why didn't he say upon this, this, this foundation? Why didn't he mention the rock? The rock, a rock is the only thing that can be a foundation and a building at the same time. Hallelujah. The Bible says a white man, a wise man build his foundation, a foolish man build his foundation where? On the sand. And the wise man digs his foundation when? On the rock. Who is the rock? The word of God, Jesus Christ. The rock is the only thing that can be the foundation and the only thing that can be a cornerstone. Child of God, you have everything that you need. A building is important, but you are built upon the rock. Do not be shaken, child of God. Stand resolute. Stand firm in the word of God. What Jesus Christ has said shall come to pass. We are a prevailing church. We are a prevailing church. We are not going anywhere. This church is here to stay. You must ask Herod. He tried. He was a king. He tried to destroy the church. 
And where is he now? The church is still here. These two shall come to pass. Hallelujah. Christ is our rock. If we look, if we look at Isaiah 28, verse 16, it says, So the Lord, who is the master, I'm reading it in easy English, look, I've put someone who's like a stone in Zion. People now know that this is a good stone. It is a valuable stone. It makes the corners of building. It's a strong stone to build on. The person who believes in him shall not perish. Let us read New King James, Isaiah 28, verse 16. Let us also look at the rock that we're talking about. Christ, our rock. Hallelujah. You know, I'm one, I must confess, the first lockdown stressed me a lot. I couldn't stand not going to church. And I'm not saying now I'm comfortable. Although I want to tell you that all things are working together for our good. All things. Why do we do where we are right now? We pray. We release prayer. And, and what, what do we do when we pray? We are saying we are established upon the rock. Our faith is not moved. Isaiah 28 verse 16 says, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes in him will not act hastily. Who is... Who, which, 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 which foundation is that? Jesus Christ. Check, check this. It is a tried stone, number one. Mm. In him there is no failure. A tried stone is a stone that has been tested and be assured that it can be a firm foundation. He is the only one who went through the cross and passed the test in, in, in Luke 4. It's a tried stone. A stone for a foundation. A precious cornerstone. Tiko A sure foundation. The rock. One rock, three in one. Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation. Number one, a tried stone. Number two, a precious, a precious cornerstone. Number three, number four, a sure foundation. A wall, a house you have got how many walls? Four walls. The church of God is protected by Jesus Christ Himself. And that means you also. When you pray, you can sing, Jesus, you are my foundation. You are my tried stone. You are my precious cornerstone. As my sure foundation, I shall not be moved by any circumstances or situation because you live. Hallelujah. 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 So you see now what, what Jesus Christ meant that upon this rock I'll build my church. He was saying upon a tribe stone, upon a sure foundation, upon a precious cornerstone, I'll build my church. And he said this assuring words that the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Child of God, wherever you might be, if you are feeling sick because of this COVID, your life is upon the rock. You shall not be sniffed out of this earth. You shall live and not die and proclaim the name of the Lord in the land of the living. Why? He's a tried rock. He's a sure foundation. He's a sure cornerstone. Hallelujah. Wow, hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And he said, I will build, I will build, I will build. Sometimes the process of, the cha of building means that you need to leave your comfort zone. Hallelujah. Building means that leaving a comfort zone. When you are building a house, when you're starting with the foundation, you leave a place where you are. You go where you are building. For the whole day, you are out of your comfort zone because you are building something new. When Jesus Christ said he will build the church, he knew that he can use me and you 
Sometimes we'll be out of our comfort zone in order for us to build. Build, you cannot build from a comfort zone. You go out. When you build, you go out. Now, now that we are out of the building, we are still building. Hmm. You don't build a building when you're inside of it. This is part of building. If it was not part of building, I will tell you, God will not have allowed it. I'm not, I'm not pro, I'm not for closing down the churches. I'm talking about the current situation right now. Child of God, you are out of your comfort zone. Do what, do what people do when they are out of a comfort zone. They build fast so that they can go back and be in the comfort zone. How do we build fast? Go back for your way. Don't stop giving to your church. Don't stop praying to your church. Don't stop encouraging your fellow brethren. Don't stop praying for your, for your fellow brethren. But when the doors reopen for the church, the church is stronger. Why? We have been building from the place of discomfort so that we can be comfortable. Hallelujah. Build child of God. So the word church literally means those who are called out <laughs> as an assembly or congregation. We are called out. It means that the whole, the whole, the whole body of believers is called out. We are called out to be a particular society, to worship in a particular place. But for us to worship in a particular place, we must first build. Hallelujah. And I told you, the fact that we are out of our comfort zone doesn't necessarily mean that the church is destroyed. Hallelujah. We are building. Say wherever I am, wherever I might be in my house, wherever I might be in my office, Wherever I might be in my car, I will continue to build the church of God. I will build through my prayers. I will build through encouraging other fellow brethren. I will build through calling out those who are supposed to be the called out to, to, to pray. There are a lot of play, there are a lot of ways of building. There are Google Meet, there is Zoom, there is all that. Let us build build using that. By the time they open these doors for the church, our prayers will have opened these doors. Hallelujah. The Bible says when they started persecuting the church, when they, they started, Herod started persecuting the, the, the church, the disciples spread preaching the word of God wherever they go. Little did they know that when they were persecuting the church, they were building the church. Wherever they went, they preached the word of God. And so mightily grew the word of God. And what? Prevail wherever they go. Hallelujah. So let us build. Let us build the church. I want to put it to you, child of God, do not be discouraged. Men of God, do not be discouraged. Let us stay in one position. There is something that, uh, you know, me and my father, God, we always having our discussions. He was telling me about the Elijah and the raven. He said, where did the, the raven put the food? On the rock, ne? <laughs> where did the raven put the food? On the rock. He said, the raven did not put the food to where Elijah was. The raven was directed to the rock. His direction, his instruction from heaven, take the meat and go and put it on that rock. So, Elijah has to know where the rock is. He has to be where next to the rock. So, God sending his help is positional. Stick to the rock. Be next. Be or be by the rock. Whatever that God wants to do, be by the rock. Do not move 
from the rock that God is building the church upon. Do not move. Because the, the bird did not have any relationship with the human being. It had a relationship with the rock. I'm sure when God was telling the raven, he said, you know what? Go next to the brook. There is a rock. Take this meat. Go put it there. Elijah, go there. You'll find meat. What, what is the converging place? The rock. Hallelujah. Do not be moved, child of God. Upon the rock, God has built his church. And there is no way, there is no way possible that the gates of Hades shall prevail. And one, one other meaning of the gate is, is the councils, designs, evil purposes. A hell means, the gate of hell means the place of departed spirits particularly evil spirits. And the meaning of this passage is that all plots, stratagems, machination of the enemies of the church will not be able to overcome it. It's a promise that has been remarkably fulfilled. And we see it, we see it manifesting now. It's coming with death. Some people are being killed via, uh, because of COVID. The main target is the church. But let me tell you one thing. You might say, Pastor, but I've lost the loved ones. They believed in God. We cannot blame God. But I want to put you, I want to, I want to put your spirit to rest. Even all of us here one day will depart from this world. And we're going to go and spend trillions and trillions of years with our master. You have lost your loved ones. They are with God. Be happy. Let us focus on building the church that Jesus started because he wants to build through us. When he says he will build his church, he's looking unto me, unto you and me. We are the only people that Jesus Christ is looking upon. When he sees you doing your role in your church, just by going to church and wipe the chair, you are building. Just when you stand by the door, and welcoming visitors, you are building. When you go to your church and worship, you are building. When you encourage their fellow brethren, you are building. When you visit somebody in a hospital and in prison, you are building. Let us not look at anything else. We can still build from where we are right now. We can still build the church from where we are right now. You can pick up the phone and pray for someone. I just called someone said, you know, I've, I've tested positive. I'm coughing. I said, why are you coughing? He said, I'm tested positive. I just said, you know what, you are healed. I called later. I said, how are you? He said, you said I'm healed, and that's exactly what I'm feeling. I'm healed. No, there was, th that, that terrible coughing was not there. It was gone. The person could talk and finish, and finish a sentence without, with, with, without coughing. What did we do? We are building. And, 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 and who's building? The Jesus Christ in us. Why is he building? Because we are located where? Next to the rock. That's where the food is for the children of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let them come with their designs. Let them come with their counsels. Let them come with their strategies. I want to put it to you. There is no way that the kingdom of hell shall ever prevail against the church. We are victorious. The cross has done it all for us. His blood was shed once and for all. And the church of God will continue and remain strong because we are not the reed. We are built upon the rock. Our foundation has four corners. Number one, our, our rock is in four corners. Number one, foundation. 
two, a tried stone, precious cornerstone, and, and, and a sure foundation. He said, whoever believes in it, whoever believes will not act hastily. I'm on Isaiah 28, verse 16. Okay, can, can, can I read this? Again? Therefore, that says the Lord, behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. There is no way. Whoever believes will not, will, will not act hastily. Do not act hastily. Do not be hasty in making decisions. Do not be hasty in making decisions. Go back to the weight. Go back to the weight. The church is not defeated. The church is being built. Either way, we are victorious. Hallelujah. I want you wherever you are, I would like you to stand up and lift up your hands and say, Jesus Christ, you said upon the rock you will build your church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Lord Jesus Christ, here I am. Use me. Use me. Plant me in the foundation of the rock. Let me be a trusted soldier in this season. When others are falling back, let me be the one who encourage my brethren. When others' faith is failing, let me be the one who encourage them. Who encourage them. When Satan seeks to save them, let me be the one who pray that their faith should not fail. Lord Jesus Christ, you said we are a prevailing church. I'm standing by what you have said. We are a prevailing church. I want to put it to you this evening that Jesus Christ has made a commitment that he will build his church. And his commitment stands for sure. It is done. We are a victorious church. We are a victorious church. I think, not I think, I believe that we should put ourselves in a place where we should start looking for signs. What signs? Signs of revival. Because I believe that the winds of revival, are go the, the winds of revival are going to hit this nation like never before. The church will be the institution that everyone will want to hear from. Because the decisions that are taken by the church, the decisions that will build this nation. Hallelujah. You are victorious, child of God. You are built upon the rock. Your job is secured. Your health is secured. Your children are secured. Your marriage is secured. Your business is secured. Do not look on your left, on your right. Do not act hustling. Stick to the rock. Stick to the rock. Go for the word. Reignite your prayer life and see what God will do for you. Let us pray. Father, you have spoken that you are building your church. And I thank you, mighty God, that tonight as a church we are encouraged to hear that it is you, Lord Jesus Christ, who is building. To hear that we are a prevailing church. And to know, Lord Jesus Christ, that yes, decisions like this were taken by the gates of old centuries ago, trying to destroy the church. The church continued to thrive and prevail. And Father, we thank you that you are the same God who changes not. Even this church, 
shall thrive and prevail. In Jesus' name, amen. Do not forget to give. Even on lockdown, the church still needs to be maintained. There are churches that are still paying rent. There are churches that are still paying for what? For electricity, for things, for their workers. So support your church. Be there for your church. Do not allow the lockdown to move your finances away from building the house of God. The account number will be there after the sermon, after, after, after this transfer. Don't forget also our fundraising, group A and group B. God bless you. We love you so much. Oh, and most importantly, our blanket drive, yes. It's my birthday tomorrow and I chose not to receive any gift from anyone. I said, the best gift that anyone can give me, buy a blanket. If a family can bring two blankets per family, I'll be the happiest man. Buy, buy me a blanket. We have a, an orphanage here in Southcrest where we'll be delivering those blankets to on Saturday. Saturday morning, we'll be taking them there. Some of you are saying, but it's locked down. It's locked down and it's cold. We'll go, we'll take the blankets there. Those children there don't have parents. If we don't become their parents, they won't have anyone to eat or to, to think for them. I chose that orphanage. Uh, we have been supporting that orphanage for years now as a church. We have partnered with it. I'll mention the name when I get their permission to mention them here on, 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 the, on media platforms. But just know that I don't need anything from you except a blanket. Buy a blanket and change somebody's life. God bless you. Keep be safe till we meet again very soon. Amen.